Can I get some stoppage of the hemorrhage by just irrigating? The answer is no. Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips in dentistry. All right, this is the moment of truth for anyone doing root canals. It's like, get the bro... Hello, get the brooch out. Let's get that pulp out of there in one shot. Bam. All right, so that's the distal canal. I got the pulp out. I still don't know why it's such a satisfaction to get that little worm out of there. We're having a little bit of tough time with hemorrhage control. Then later on in the video, we're gonna come back two weeks later. Two weeks later. And see what the pulp looks like. So as you can see, we placed some, I've cleaned and shaped everything. The mesial canals are to a 3506. The distal canals to a 44, 4004 and it's still hemorrhaging. We didn't finish the case. We placed medication, calcium hydroxide down the canals and primarily because this is a really tough tooth to numb. Now, if you're not a clinician and you're a patient, I really appreciate you watching these videos. It doesn't happen, I wanna say, it doesn't happen frequently that we have a difficult time numbing patients, but sometimes these teeth are super difficult. This patient is very interesting because he has a, I would almost call it a super class three. And to try to get landmarks, I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years, but to get landmarks for that block were a little more complicated. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to place calcium hydroxide. As you can see here, you can the hemorrhage is starting to well up again. The problem was is that he was still feeling something when I was going down there. So with the cones and whatnot, I was like, okay, that's it, we're done. But what that tells me is that there's probably pulp tissue down there. That, that's one of the most common reasons why you're having hemorrhaging. And stick around for later on in the video because you'll see actually what that pulp tissue looks like when we go to get it out of there. And you'll see how I pulled it out just for fabricating this video actually. But what we're doing now is I'm just irrigating this to try to use some hypo, sometimes hypo sodium hypochlorite can stop bleeds, sometimes. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to see like, hey, listen, can I get some stoppage of the hemorrhage by just irrigating? The answer is no, it is not stopping. So that really tells me that it's not so much a PDL bleed, but we've got actually apical pulp tissue down there. And if I were to go ahead and just finish the case, likely the case would have failed. Now, some of the anatomical things I'm looking at is it's a really wide ribbon shaped distal canal. And when you see those in your mirror, you can expect there's gonna be a lot of pulp tissue. Now, remember I'd shown you that I'd pulled the pulp out initially and I thought that and that gave me like a get out of jail free card, <coughs> but apparently it didn't, not at all. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna dry our mesial canals. Have you felt stuck during a root canal? Can't get down a canal? Are you blocked out, ledged? Are you ready for a change? Are you looking to enhance your skills and provide better endodontic care? Why wait? Your journey to endodontic confidence begins now. And as a member of Root Canal Like an Endodontist, you will never be alone on the road to root canal success. Our online course will teach you the most predictable techniques for successful root canal treatment. Get access to comprehensive video lectures, interactive case studies, and our private Facebook group where the learning really takes place. Check us out at allthingsendo.ca. I can't wait to meet you. And we're gonna place calcium hydroxide down them. I was gonna place that in there, and actually what I did was I ended up using it like a cork, just to keep the hemorrhage from going into the mesial canals. I'm putting a little bit of apical pressure there, just trying to, as the hemorrhage comes up, onto the paper point. I'm just trying to put more apical pressure. And then what we're gonna do, because what I've done before is that it's just become this huge, you know, put in the comments below if you know what I'm talking about, it becomes this huge hemorrhaging mess and it's really tough to see what's going on. So I'm gonna quickly put some calcium hydroxide into those mesial canals. Then I'll take a hand file and I'm just gonna pump it up and down pretty quick in, in and out of the uh, the mesial canals while the, the uh, distal canal is still acting like a cork. Here, so now we've got our calcium hydroxide and our mesial canals. We remove the paper point from the distal canal and we're just gonna place this. Now it's really close up. It's not deep down the canal, so you, I'm not worried about extruding. It is, a, it is a mandibular molar, second molar, so it, this one is close to the inferior alveolar nerve. You definitely have to be considerate of that. Now I've got my cotton pellet in here. This is a bit of triage material from the previous provider. And then we're just gonna place our Fuji restoration. I called the patient the next day, patient's totally fine. I'm like, sweet, awesome. Two weeks later. Okay, so here we are. We are two weeks out. I've just literally, I've removed all the restoration. This is just ore seal all the way around just to get a tight seal. And then what we're gonna do, you can see that the hemorrhage has stopped. And then we're just gonna take paper points and we're gonna dry all our canals. Patient's been asymptomatic since the case was, uh, since the other pulp, since the pulpectomy. So that's good news. It's always great news. Remind me somewhere in the comments because actually one of my dental assistants worked with an endodontist and showed me one way, another way to use paper points and I was doing it here. 
You can kind of see it right now, actually. I might do a short on it. How you bend, you take it normally, take the paper point normally, and then you bend it towards one side. And what that does is it allows you to angle. It's very helpful in this case, trying to get them in a mat mandibular molar. Actually bend them. I can't show it in 2Ds here in like on the screen. But you bend the paper point, you know, so it's almost 90 degrees to the side of the cotton forceps. All right, so what do you think that is? So what that is, that is the pulp tissue that stopped hemorrhaging and probably slowly necrosed a bit because, you know, I'm not a histology expert, Dr. Bakuchi is, but this is probably some pulp tissue that's necrosed and the hemorrhage just stopped. And look at how much is there. Isn't that crazy? I got a paper point down there, or I had gotten a, got a percha point down there, I'd use a 4004 and it just wasn't enough. So what I wanted to do was, you know, I could easily take a rotary file uh, like vortex or something and kind of rip that out of here but what we're going to do is we're going to use headstroms just to see how much material is going to come out so there's our pulp tissue right now so that was a culprit now the thing is, is that had you gone of gone ahead unfortunately or had i gone ahead and just finished it right there say for example like in my old the other video where it was more of a pdl bleed had i just you know force the issue along place some place some bc sealer got maybe some hammer some hemorrhage control hemostasis and then finish the case well all of this pulp tissue is going to necrose and slowly fail this case so i'm going to take a 40 oh yeah the other thing is is that what i'm using is a headstrom file so it's really made for filing so i'm going to put this in high speed here it only took a couple minutes so we're slowly you know it doesn't have to be slow you can just take your rotary file and then so we're just using a we're using this headstrom just to kind of show you. We'll speed this up a little bit more. There we go. So we're going to get all that pulp tissue out of there. It was actually quite impressive how much came out of there. Also in this video, uh, if you keep watching, one of my videos before had talked about the M4 reciprocating handpiece. So it's, you know, you use it on stainless steel files and it reciprocates to get a glide path. Well, actually, I cracked it out after it's been sitting for a damn near six years somewhere I just found it I was looking for something in the basement of course and I found it. I was like oh let's just crack this thing out of here so we pulled it out and I actually used it in this case as well and it was really helpful so there's more pulp tissue okay I think we get the idea there Ash so we're pulling all this pulp tissue out and this is a 40 a 4002 headstrom file really useful look at all that material so look at all that pulp tissue that's coming out of there that was still remaining so no wonder why it wouldn't stop hemorrhaging. So that is one technique you can use. And then we'll rinse, we'll irrigate all that out with our sodium record. So I'm gonna open up to a 50. And what I'm doing, the reason why I use the headstrom, if you're asking a question, is because it's really, it's a very coarse, you can see the file, the flutes there, it's very coarse as compared to the regular K file, which is either, you know, usually there are square files that are, are they're either ground or twisted. This is a ground file and it is really aggressive. So it's perfect for filing the walls or planing the walls or whatever you want to call it, that it's the, the, the technique is filing. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just filing and I'm using my cotton forceps just so I can get a better picture uh, without my fingers in the way. So normally I just use my hands, but we'll just use cotton forceps. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some irrigant down there. Oh, not yet. Okay, so we irrigated that out and then we're going to get our working length. So I got my working length with my 15 file, but it was really tight to get that the 15 file out to get the glide pass. So I'm like, you know what? Let's go ahead and put use the M4. Now I'm using, I actually left this in here because it's actually a struggle to try to get that file in there without kind of knocking. Now it's a great handpiece actually. It just reminds me of how effective the tool it was. Could this have been done with just simple reciprocating for the normal files that I use, the Wave of Gold or the Brasser? Yeah, probably, but it was a nice, it actually made it a lot faster because I didn't have to bend my reciprocant, the nickel titanium file to get out because I think it was a, it was a pretty, pretty swift, distal buckle kick on this uh, on this canal. So we have our file to length, it was pretty tight and we're just running at 3000 RPM and you can see it just going back and forth, back and forth. Now in the previous video, there's a comments as well, just about file fracture and I would love to do some testing. I just don't have the time. The other thing is that the Chinese versions 
you got to be careful if you're going to be getting a Chinese version. They have 90 degrees, and I'm not sure. Like, this is the 30 degree uh, variation. So the 90 degree, I'm not sure if it makes a significant difference or not, to put it like that. So if you if you know a little bit more, you can put it in the comments below. I really appreciate it. So I'm just tracking. What I'm doing is I'm tracking my glide path. So I'm just going up and down nice and slow, small, amp small amplitude, and I'm just checking to see how smooth it is. And honestly, on a 7, to do this is so much easier. So I pulled it out, and you can see, I don't know in two dimensions if you can see the kind of crazy curve. No, nope. it was actually quite a curve. You can kind of see it here. It was a significant curve, so that was that. So it was helpful, very helpful. So we removed all the pulp tissue. I'm going to run oh, back, back, back. Okay, so this is a great sign. This is what I love seeing. Tissue on the apical flutes of even my 2507. So it's a large canal and it goes to a small little finish. So I'm happy with that. I'm actually gonna open to a 3506 and then I'm actually gonna call it a day. So as you can see, what a difference in terms of finishing this distal canal. We got all the pulp tissue out of it and there's just a little bit of tissue that came flying off. But anyways, that is it. So that's one technique to stop hemorrhaging from a canal, place some calcium hydroxide and then come back a few weeks later and then address the canal. It makes life so much easier. Anyways, I'm so grateful you're here. Thank you so much for your time and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.